Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into the NCWB studios. Uh, we're here at Roger D. Williams Memorial Field for the inaugural episode of the 2021 season of Wiffle Ball Weekly. Uh, so I'm here in the studio as always with my co-host Bryson McGee, yes, uh, the commissioner and president of North Carolina Wiffle Ball. Uh, so Bryson, it's been a long time since we've done an episode of Wiffle Ball Weekly. Um, it's been way too long. Um, how have you been? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Did you have your Christmas? Yeah. Okay, we have yeah. we have the episodes yeah. out since yeah. before yeah. the holidays, yeah. so uh, well, good deal, good deal. So uh, we're gonna go we're gonna go over a lot of stuff today. We have all the guys here, and we have some spring training series going on after this today that we'll live stream. Um, but anyway, so uh, we're gonna talk about kind of you know the teams that we have this season, uh, how the divisions are set up, and then we're gonna get some input from every guy that we have here today, um, and then we're gonna going to look at uh, opening day matchups and stuff like that, and then get our our take as yeah. well. Uh, so first of all, let's play the American League. Uh, we have the Backyard Bulldogs, which are captained by Taylor Furches, the Eastern Express, captained by Brian McGee, uh, and the Southeastern Sharks, captained by myself. Um, the name kind of comes from the fact that I love sharks, I always love sharks, and so, um, yeah, pretty pretty simple stuff. Um, the National League, obviously, is the Carolina Crush, obviously, which is captained by none other than the GOAT, Bryson McGee. Uh, the Piedmont Predators, captained by James Gerald, James the Tank Shot, Thomas Harrell. Uh, he has many nicknames, but all in all, we just call him the Beast. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the way the divisions are set up this year. Uh, the reason being that they were, uh, the reason that they are, it's uneven is because obviously, you know, Ethan was supposed to uh, be the captain of the Downtown Devils, which would have completed the National League. Obviously, we weren't able to expand as much as we wanted. Um, honestly, I'm not, that's not just because he's on my team, but I'm not necessarily upset about that for a couple of reasons. Number one being that it gives us the ability to navigate this expansion thing. Yeah. Uh, Bryson, but before we go any further, how do you feel about the expansion this season? I like it. I think it's uh, turned out well with the uh, series we've already had. Playing two on two, it's went very well. Um, they've been very good series. I mean, one was, they were all close somewhat, and so it's just, been, it's been a lot of fun expanding. And see how well, you know, I, another thing I think too is I was, I was thinking about it after we played the spring training series, yeah. and I said, you know, I'm tired. But I'm not drained, and there's a difference between obviously having to field the ball yourself and do it all one on one, as opposed to having a teammate yeah. that can back you up. And you would think playing three game series is just an impossible, and you would get so tired, but it's not. I mm -hmm. mean, you just, I mean, three innings don't seem like it's that far. No, it really doesn't seem like it's that long. And even with the uh, with the expanded run rule, um, yeah. the new the new field setup and everything, obviously, and we're doing spring training stuff over on DLM field, which is our practice and spring training field. Yeah. Um, here at the complex, it's you know it's pretty it's it's pretty, it's, simple. it's pretty simple. It's not not too much. So uh, we're gonna get some of the draft picks up first and foremost, which is Josh Logan, the number one overall pick uh, by the Piedmont Predators this season. Thank God you're skinny because it's just tight out here. Uh, so Josh, obviously, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Happy Thank to you. have you today. Uh, so this is obviously your first season mm -hmm. at NCWB, mm -hmm. and uh, first of all, I will kind of backtrack to the draft. Um, how do you feel, obviously, being the number one overall pick? Do you feel like that adds any pressure to your rookie year? I feel like it does, because uh, my first time playing was at the uh, Summer Classic last mm -hmm. year, and uh, I did not put on a good performance in that one. I was, yeah, that was my you're, first you're, time you're playing football. Yeah, I was with you, and I was <laughs> struggling. I was like, yeah, this is so being number one overall. is kind of like, wow, the pressure's on now. I've really got to step it up, but I'm looking forward to it. Well, and, and, and to that point, I don't think – you're not going to have to take on the whole load, obviously, because you've got one heck of a captain yes. in James and yes. has, has a great bat. His pitching, we've seen in spring training so far, it's, 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 a, it's a lot better than it was last year. And, honestly, it's a lot better than mine is uh, – and, and he, the way he was pitching to us in the captain series a couple of weeks ago, he, he made me look like I'd never pitched before. So, I'm excited to see the way that James yeah, is going to carry the Preds this year. Um, do you, I know that, obviously, you haven't, you haven't played with the ball before. But obviously, I know that you have your uh, you don't have you have baseball background. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that's going to give you some benefit in the batter's box and or on the pitcher's mound? I think it will. Um, this two sports are very similar, but also very different at the same time. You can carry a lot of the same concepts over. And I think that's really going to help me kind of intertwine my skills to really make myself successful and my team. I would agree with that, Bryson. Um, what's your goals for this year? Uh, going, I'm now going number one overall. It's a big mm -hmm. pressure, but um, what what's your goals for batting stats? Uh, really to just be consistent. Um, that's something I've struggled with in the past in a lot of sports is consistency. So really um, trying to be consistent, being successful, and uh, just giving it my best. Just As long as I put the best effort out there, I mean, as, as long as we're doing good, that's what matters. That's what pretty much all the captains ask for. Yeah. And, and that's, what, that's what it's all about is, you know, put, putting in your best effort, showing up every day, and 
and uh, just doing the best you can because yeah. you know we, we we have a lot planned we have a lot of goals and obviously I know I know James wants to get back to the wants to get to the World Series uh, mm -hmm. first and uh, obviously, you know, you've got a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a lot of speed in the outfield, and obviously, you know, the batting will come on time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, we saw you practicing some pitching, and you don't look bad. James obviously is good on the mound. James mm -hmm. is good on the box, so y'all are going to be a good threat this year. Mm -hmm. um, well, good deal. Congratulations. Yes, Thanks thank for you. coming. And thank you. Uh, we'll see you out here in a little while. Yeah. All right, so next we're going to get uh, – Jeff Hardy? We're going to get um, we're gonna get Ethan, Ethan Williams up here, obviously, who is uh, – not new to the NCWB, but obviously with him being a draft pick this year, we want to get him in here and uh, get some of his thoughts uh, about the 2021 season. So, Ethan, first of all, welcome, welcome. Um, so, first of all, obviously you're drafted second, but this is, an, this is your third season at NCWB. So, you, you have – He's not a rookie. He's not a rookie, just to, just to clarify. Even though if you want to get technical, he, he is, but he's not. Um, and so, and he, don't qualify for he doesn't qualify for rookie of the year because he's it's his third season in the league. So, uh, Ethan, obviously, you were drafted second. And uh, what is is my phone ringing? Does it stop the video? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, I have to cut that out. So, obviously, Ethan, it's your third season in NCAA. Uh, you had what I would call a breakout season last year. Um, what do you feel is what do you feel you can build off of from last year going into this year? Um, I don't know. There's a lot. I mean, not too, too much, but there's a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know last year, you know, you, you, you took Bryson to extras, and uh, y'all had one heck of a game, and, and obviously y'all were awfully close to, to catching – you were awfully close to catching the win. Obviously, you went to extras and lost by just a couple of runs. But um, as far as, you know, your, your pitching really stepped up. The second – we'll talk about when we started – all right, so more specifically, I want to focus on your second half last year. Obviously, first half, you finished around like three and six or three and seven. Uh, it was rather rough, if we're honest. But then the second half, obviously, huh? It oh, it was 0 10? Just kidding. I was giving more credit than I guess he deserved. But he started it. Yeah. He, he didn't win a single game. Obviously, a couple of those were due to forfeits. Um, with anyway, him being injured. With, with him being injured and stuff. Um, but anyway, so obviously, then you come back to your second half and you won, I think, half of your games and you played very well. Yeah. Uh, going, taking that performance into this year, obviously, where you went to three games against the Diamondbacks in the, in the National League Division Series, uh, what do you feel that brings to the table as far as your skill set for this year? I don't know, honestly. Just got to play. You know, that's what we all got to do. Yeah. Just try to be consistent, really. Okay. Right. Um, so, going from being a captain and calling all the shots on the team, from going to be the draft pick and having to listen to your brother, what kind of – what kind of – Change has that made from you as a player? Um, nothing really. Like I said, just got to play consistent, play for the team, and just play my best. Yeah, well, one good thing cool. is y'all are right across the hall from each other. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it, well, Bryson talks about like I'm, like I'm some kind of dictator. You know? <laughs> really, yeah. all in all, I think that we're going to be able to just kind of mesh together. And, you know, we, we have our own strengths in different, in different areas. You know, Ethan's better in the box and better in the outfield than I am. Um, so at times, like we were on the mound and vice versa, he's better in a lot of aspects than me. He's obviously more athletic than me. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a good mix. Uh, I may or may not get carried. We'll see what happens this year. But, uh, Ethan, thank you, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you out here in a little while. All right. All right, third, we're going to get Kyle Shelton, uh, drafted by the Bulldogs. We're going to get, we're gonna get Kyle in here and um, get, his, get his take. Obviously, we did that at the draft, uh, but I want to get it again here today. So, Kyle, first of all, welcome, welcome. Good golly, you are so freaking hot. Oh, okay. I don't even got to see the TV now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so obviously, Kyle, you were drafted fourth by the Bulldogs, and I know that the draft we had that conversation that you were excited because you wanted to play for what you wanted to play with Taylor um, originally. Anyway, so with that being said, what are some of your goals for this season and uh, kind of your outlook on what you expect in your rookie year? Uh, my goals are just to win games with my teammate. Uh, I hope that we go far in the tournament, or at least in the league, and do really well this season. I tell you what, you you definitely not because I'm there by, by no means, but the American League is is I would say the more the more difficult league this year simply because uh, we have Brian and Derek on the team and they they are both very experienced in the game uh, and know how to you know mentally kind of mess with your head and stuff. Uh, do you think that adds any extra pressure to to you and, and Taylor at all? Or I mean, I, I'll say I think it adds some pressure to to the Sharks. But what do you how do you feel? I don't think I have any pressure at all. Dude, this, this man's as cool under pressure as he's done. He is cool, calm, and collective. Um, so I you're can't say I agree with that. <laughs> but, um, I'm scared to play that. I'm scared. <laughs> but Taylor, Taylor's the two scared. sons are scared. Yeah. I mean, and, and fair enough. I think those are going to be some great series. 
Um, do you have any personal goals this year, or do you just want to win games for the team? Just win games for the team. Hopefully take home the trophy. <laughs> well, it's right here. <laughs> um, anyway, so Bryson, do you have any questions, any, any Not thoughts? Not really. I mean, I think he's pretty much answered everything I would ask. I mean, what – if you do step on the mound, what would be your like goal? Like just throw strikes, be consistent. Throw strikes and uh, hopefully strike people out. Don't put them on base. That, that, that's kind of the thing with the game, you know. You don't put runners on base because then you get yourself into a jam. And uh, well, good luck to you. And we're looking forward, uh, looking forward to seeing you play this year in your rookie year. Um, so we're gonna go. We're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go to the captains now. Uh, we're gonna Thanks. get. We're gonna get good old James Harrell, Mr. Tank Shot up here, uh, the captain of the Piedmont Predators. I'm not big. Yeah, you're not big. <laughs> no, you're not. Kyle, I'll tell you what, Kyle's got these long legs, and he's like seven feet tall, and he makes me feel like a midget. Um, so, obviously, you're the captain of the Preds. It's your third year at NC Whiffle. Um, what, being, going from being a, a captain of, of a sole team that's just you to a captain of a team with, with, with a player, with obviously, and Josh, um, what do you feel has changed as far as your responsibility goes and the pressure you feel as far as being the leader? Um, I don't have that all that weight on me to do everything. Mm. You know, I mean, I you know I have to you know lead as a captain and stuff like that. But I don't. It's not just me by myself. You know, I've got a you know great pick and Josh and I'm excited. Well, um, what goals do you have for the team this year? Win a championship. Win a championship. That's it. Win a championship. That's do, you, do you have? I know obviously you have 33 games this season. Uh, do you have a particular record in mind? Do you just want to? Obviously, nobody will finish with being an odd number of games. Nobody will finish at 500. The good, there's good and bad news to that. The good news is you won't finish, you know, you, can, you can't finish 50%, you can finish over or under. Um, do you have any particular record goals or as far as like personal goals, home runs, stats, ERA? Um, just try and keep the, the ERA down. I say the personal goal. You know, I really didn't do great pitching last year, but I think, you know, since I've got somebody out there to back me up, you know, I can pitch a little bit more to contact and so I can get them out. I think I think that's that's a very good point. You know, the the, the challenge the challenge with obviously pitching the contact this year, and I think and Bryce can attest to this because we've seen it so far in spring training, is that you know you pitch the contact and that's there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is obviously if the ball takes a bad hop, you have to make sure you stay down on it. Um, and and with, obviously with with Josh or whoever, Ethan, Kyle, whoever the outfielder is, obviously you know you have to if you're playing center, you have to be able to to kind of move back and forth, and that kind of creates a little bit of a challenge. Um, Bryson, what do you got for James today? Um, I just want to see, I mean, what do you have in mind for a record against the National League and Division Series? Against um, now he's prodding. He's trying to figure out what his goals yeah, are. Kind of, kind of, you know, um, just trying to be in number one in the division. You know, if I got to step on, you know, the crush's toes a little bit, I'll do what I do. Hopefully you can crush it. Good luck to you, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you the rest of this year and seeing what the Preds do. I know they're going to be a, they're going to be a great team this year. Um, Next up, we'll talk. We'll talk about myself. Yeah. Uh, I just want to talk about kind of what I have in mind for the season thus far. Um, obviously, I'm captain of the Sharks. My first season here at NC Whiffle, and you know the goals I have for this year are pretty simple. Uh, I really I want to get back to the World Series. Uh, obviously, I know I made it in 20, uh, 2019, the, the first year as the Yankees, and uh, lost lost to the Braves. Uh, in three games, and so or in two, the best two out of three. Remember. I can't remember what happened that year, but anyway. So, obviously, that's kind of my goal is to get back to the World Series. Um, obviously, I made the champ, the National Championship Series uh, in twenty twenty, and uh, what a year twenty twenty was. Uh, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Um, but I, as far as the Sharks show this year, I just want to see us. I want to see us do well enough to to maybe finish at the top the uh, top the AL. And uh, and from the rest of it, from the, from the rest of it, we'll just take it as we yeah. go. Uh, I like, I'd like to get that first round by come August yeah. when it comes to the to the division series. And uh, if we can do that, you know, I think that'll put us in a good position to be well rested for the championship yeah. series and hopefully hopefully make another run of the World Series. Yeah. Um, uh, what's, kind of goal. what's your goal against like division? And I mean, what's your re division record? Well, what do you want your division record to be? Well, uh, you know, we play. We play we play both teams I think two or three times each so we play them a total of like on fifteen games or something yeah. like that. Um, I think we play Taylor three times, play the Express twice, so that makes for fifteen division games. Uh, I really I'd like to win ten division games. You know, go yeah. go you know two thirds of the way there. I'd like to go fifteen and zero in division games. Obviously, I know with my division it's not going to happen. Uh, more than likely, it's going to take a perfect storm. Um, those things typically don't happen in movies, but they've happened in real life before. Uh, I just want I would like to win ten division games. Uh, like I said, I just like to I like to win enough division games. If if not ten, if it's eight, whatever the magic number is, I'd like to win it in order to get 
uh, to get that first round by. Oh, I'm definitely looking Jefferson. forward to our rivalry. The rivalry, the, obviously, the Next Sharks and Crest this year. Um, you know, hopefully, we'll be able to take a bite out of that, and um, you know, we'll 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 have a good time there. Obviously, you know, we had the we had the spring training series recently, and it was close. You know, we even though we got beat around a little bit, I felt like I had my best pitching yeah. performance in my career, and it makes me feel good uh, considering it wasn't on RDW. It makes me feel confident that once I get to RDW, um, it'll be a better a better experience. Uh, so, uh, so that's that's all I've got for the Sharks this year. Obviously, I have high expectations for myself, and I know Ethan holds himself to a high standard. I don't have to do that for him. He's, he's obviously he's a great player in and of himself. Uh, we've got T. Furch. Uh, we've got a lot of conversation to have with Taylor, um, obviously, namely because he's coming off a rookie season um, in which we we didn't necessarily expect, obviously, being that the Blue Jays and James finished first in the American League, we definitely expected, uh, we definitely, I, personally, I expected James to make the World Series. Um, obviously, and Taylor, you know, you, it was your first year at NCWB, and obviously the captain of the Bulldogs this year. It's your second year, uh, and in 2020, you made the World Series as a rookie. So, being that you set the bar that high for yourself, obviously, you set the record for home runs in a post in a postseason game with five in game one of the ALCS. Um, uh, what what are some of your thoughts kind of building off of last year going into your first year as a captain? Uh, you know, the home run record and any record I have was, I think it's only that one. Um, mm, I don't remember. But, I know you had the record for uh, most strikeouts in the game. <laughs> yeah. Bryson said it with 10. Yeah. Let's forget about that one. Um, but other than that, you know, the records, they don't really fade. You just go out and play one game at a time. Records don't phase you, so if you go 0 33 this year, that won't bother you a bit. Uh, that's yeah, right. different. That's, that's, that's different. different. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so obviously, I know that you have a, a, a not like I said, not because I'm there, not because Ethan's there, but because your dad and Brian are there in the American League with us. Um, what I know, you, I think you played you, you play them two or three times this year. Um, what are your goals? Do you have? Obviously, I know you like going to the field against them, but do you kind of just want? Do you want to not lose a series? Do you want to not get swept? What are your goals facing the Express this year? Uh. Well, I really have three goals for that. Uh, first one, just win. Second one, go yard. The third one, I just kind of want to, you know, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of want to catch pop fly from my father because you know he he used to play center field. He's why I play center field, and it just be a nice memory. Nice and one, get, one get way to out. do that oh, yeah. is to get him out by robbing one of his homes. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I would like to see that happen. Absolutely. Um, I might not sleep over the next night. But. So, obviously, you have a very a very team-oriented player oh, with, with Kyle. Uh, he's, he said that his goals are just to win games for the, for the Bulldogs, uh, just to do well for the team. Uh, how does that make you feel as a captain and, and, and your pick in him? How do you feel about that? Well, I'm a lot more confident because now I mean, I've – Went out there earlier, seen the pitch. He missed his own maybe three times that I've seen. So he's he's throwing it fast. He's getting good break and he's hitting his own. So he's doing better than I would pitching. And I, uh, yeah, that could be a dangerous combo if if, if Kyle can lock it down on the mound and, oh, yeah. and Taylor's skill and speed in the outfield. That could make for a very a very challenging Bulldog team. Um, somebody might get pounded. I'm anyway. also I'm also more confident with him answering the questions for the Bulldogs. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll yes. let's keep that in mind as we do yeah. as we do post game impressors and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I have to. He answered the right questions. He did. Yeah. Okay. Well, he answered he answered them the way that you wanted to you wanted to be answered. So good luck to you, and uh, we're looking forward to. I know I know you play Bryce on opening day, and uh, we'll talk yeah. about that here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, last but not least, as far as captains go, we want to talk to uh, we want to talk to Bryson. Uh, so Bryson, obviously, the captain of the Crush. Uh, it's your third season at, at NCWB. You had a 20 and a record in 2020. Uh, it was two. That's oh, that's regular season and playoffs. Uh, it was two games shy of the uh, of of, 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 huh? of an undisputed season. Um, running 20, running the table at 22 and 0, and winning, winning it all again. Uh, but you have a 20. Uh, what I really want to talk about is you have a 24 game win streak dating back to 2019, going all the way back to the 2019 postseason. On into today, to on into or towards opening day of the 2021 season, you have 24 game win streak. Um, because obviously, spring training games won't count against you one way or the other. Um, so, with that said, what do you feel you could take away from that win streak and from your successes over the past couple of years into the expansion year in 2021? Um, pretty much just staying confident on the mound and being able to place the ball where I need it to be. That's one of my main things is being able to hit corners and know where to throw it against each player. I mean, I've, I've been able to 
see all of them play, so I know all their weaknesses, and I know where they miss the ball and where they will hit it, so I can be confident in where I know to go on the mound and just staying strong at the plate and being having that patience and letting on my pitch. Well, I do want to note that uh, obviously we did play uh, the Crush, played Bryson and Thomas Pell in the in, in spring training recently, and uh, we got swept. You know, we didn't play bad, but they played really well. Thomas looks really good considering it's his first year with a ball. He wasn't able to make it today. He had some conflicts come up. Um, but Bryson, obviously, I know you obviously you pretty much have two championships as a, as a, as an organization, um, but officially you just have one. Yeah. Obviously, I know you'd like to go three straight World Series. Um, so I would like to ask, what are your goals for the, for the Crush this season in your first official year as an organization? Um, really just winning the series and just staying confident and playing it one, one series at a time. The main goal that I've had for two years now, just that playing one game at a time and make sure I'm staying confident up in here and I know I can make it there. I just got to. I gotta do it on the field. Well, and, and what, what a lot of what you what you guys don't see, and what we you know we don't really talk about a whole lot is how a lot of what happens on the field it, it comes from here. Like Bryson said, it comes from the from mental a mental standpoint. You know the um, the the place you are mentally and your your goals and just the toughness you have mentally yeah. to to you know, stay plugging when things when you have a rough day, not to get down on yourself when you're having a rough day on the mound, if you're having a rough day on the box, uh, you have a couple of errors now. Okay, whatever the situation is that day. Um, that was pretty much the example of um, what happened this past week when we played. We had a couple errors out in the outfield, but I was able to keep Thomas's uh, confidence up, and we were able to play solid. I mean, and, and, and which is a good thing because you know you you have the ability to do that, and that's going to give you a lot of upside potential yeah. as we head towards towards opening day, which is only two weeks away. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, opening day Saturday, April 17th at one o'clock. Um, we're really excited. Obviously, it won't be live streamed, but it'll be out right after, so you guys be sure to check that out. So last but not least, uh, we want to talk about opening day matchups. Uh, obviously, we have a World Series rematch between the Carolina Crush, which is Bryson's team, and the backyard Bulldogs, which we're we'll talk about, crushed. which is Taylor's team. And uh, Bryson, welcome to the Dog Pound. They, they're making their, their references here. And then the Piedmont Predators are scheduled to host the Eastern Express um, following that series on opening day. Um, I don't want to ask you about your and Taylor series because I'd like to just save that suspense because yeah. and I know we've talked about it some. We've seen you guys play several times. You know, you've grown up together. You play ball together. Right. You had a rivalry last year. You'll have a rivalry this year. It'll be a rivalry, rivalry every time we play. Exactly right. So, Duke um, UNC. Huh? Duke and UNC. That's the best rivalry in sports. It's not the same thing. Um, but <laughs> you go to you go the Fresno Express. Um, you know, like we talked about, James is great back. James is great on the mound. Josh is going to be a solid player. Derek and Brian, the issue with them is going to be, I think mentally they're going to be able to get it all in our heads. Yes. Uh, what is it? They've already talked about Age. Age. <laughs> um, so opening day, that's the opening day matchups. Obviously, the Crush and Bulldogs are scheduled for 1 o'clock. Uh, the President Express are scheduled for 4 that, that afternoon. Um, we're hoping it's going to be a pretty day. We're looking forward to the new and improved uh, Roger D. Williams Memorial Field. Uh, we're very excited yeah. about being able to do opening day over there. And uh, all in all, I just cannot wait to get this season yeah, started. Yeah. We've been working on this for uh, the better part of nine months or so, and for it to finally be uh, just a couple of weeks out is crazy. Because yeah. I remember, you know, we went on vacation in July and we did yeah. episode with Paul Wickland and stuff, and we were like, you know, we were if, planning if, stuff. We were then. planning stuff then, you know, we were, you know, nine months away, and it felt like it was never going to get here, and then all but at once it did. And, and then uh, during the whole off season, there was things happening over there, like. Is this going to happen or what? Yeah, I mean, we had several things fall through and change and this, that, and the other as far as the offseason goes. And, um, I mean, just all kinds of stuff that happened this offseason. We were wondering if, if the expansion was going to go off without a hitch. And for the most part, it has. Um, I'm very excited to see what, what, each guy, what, what each new guy brings to the table. Um, especially Josh. He's, yeah, he's not had a lot of experience in wiffle ball. And I know he's had the tournament. And, obviously, he mentioned he did have a rough performance. And nothing wrong with it. Everybody has a rough day. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, obviously, I know Kyle was, you know, Kyle was on your team at the tournament. Obviously, and you guys obviously ended up winning the whole thing. Um, Ethan got carried by Kane a little bit. Um, but as a whole, you know, everybody has something to bring to the table, and I think that's what's so important to talk about um, this season. But um, but I don't have any more thoughts as far as this episode goes. Uh, Bryson, what, do, you, do you have any closing remarks, any wishes, um, any uh, No, concerns? I just want to thank everybody for staying tuned. And I hate we haven't got no um, videos out that more than we have, but we just had 
we've been busy planning everything else behind the scenes. So I just hope y'all stay tuned, stay tuned for opening day. It's going to be a fun day for sure. It's going to be a blast, and we'll be sure to, um, you know, maybe we'll do a little, we'll do some live stream BP or something like that. We won't obviously won't live stream the games. Um, we'll get them out there right after. But but anyway, but yeah, we do apologize myself especially for the delay in content. Uh, the letting get content out, you know, working and stuff like that, it makes for uh, makes for a lot going on. But as a whole, uh, we're going to do better this year. We have a new a new software, a new uh, plan in place for editing, and so we're very excited to be able to do it uh, in a much better and more efficient fashion this season. So uh, that's for everybody here at NC Wiffle. Um, Isaac Williams this is Bryson McGee, and uh, this has been another episode of Football Weekly. Thank you guys, and look forward to twenty twenty one. We will see y'all next time. See y'all. <laughs>